And yes, this hangout is live on air now. This is another uh, uh, myfriendsareawesome.com um, with with me, Cameron Marceau, and Trader Yadavali. Hey, how you guys doing? And our guest this evening is Mr. Tomaso Lesnick. Howdy. Also, one of because you know we're just we're just uh, Knox whores. We're just like always doing the Knox thing because you know. Our most awesome friends are from there. Actually, that's not true. I've got so many other friends, but like, it's where where Shri and I cross over. So, right. so it's um, it's a common thread between Cameron and I for now. And then, as we start making this thing more, you know, a bigger, then we'll start picking friends that we think that would fit into the mold here. And so, so. <laughs> We're being such clicks. I mean, it's like a, it's like yeah, a little, know. Just, like little yeah. sorority or something. I know. <laughs> so, anyway, Tommaso. Yes. How's it going? It's going pretty well. <laughs> now that I've got the technology thing all figured out. <laughs> well, having it go pretty well is pretty great. So, so um, it's been... Now, I've seen you... Uh, you know, like little bits here and there, because right. we live in the same, the same met metropolitan area. Right. And, uh, um, and so so, but we I don't think we've actually exchanged more than twenty words at the t at, at any of those times we've we've run into each other. Right. It sort of always seems like it's been happenstance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Especially in my in my uh, retail days, primarily, because you're you're a you're a, a native native of Evanston, correct? Not exactly. My mom lives up in Evanston. Yes, so she moved up there. Um, I think a little bit after Knox. Really? Yeah. Wait, wait. After you first went, or well, after we left. Where did I? Because I went to your house. Yeah. Um, my freshman year. Right. Spring break. Wow. Yeah. Um, that was the year of the snowstorm. I, I, I think that I think it was, and and um, I had nowhere to go, and so we all like. I remember going to your house, and of course at that point I had no idea where I was. Right. Probably it was a brick house, square. <laughs> it had a roof, front door. <laughs> yeah, I think my mom had just moved up there. Oh, okay, okay. After 20-some years in Alabama, or 15. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Yeah. So is that where you grew up? Right, so we moved there in 1980, um, which was the start of middle school for me. Okay. Um... And I can walk you backwards or forwards from the beginning, either way. Wait, wait. So, so you're you're somewhat an Alabama boy, really? Well, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I knew that. Yeah, well. Well, it didn't. It sure it certainly doesn't shine through. <laughs> well, not being a native Alabamian. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you were you were originally born and raised in Italy, right? Or yeah, yeah. right. So. Um, Born in Florence, and then my folks moved back and forth between the U.S. and Italy for the first 10 years, 10, 12 years. Wow. Um, and that was really, I think, kind of my dad doing the like academic, still working on his Ph.D., some teaching jobs that would come up for a time, you know, so we were in... Um, you know, Rochester and Ann Arbor, and um, in between we were in Italy. Um, okay. Where I think my folks got married, they were still in undergrad, so like they were, they finished up. Uh, um, I don't know if they finished b both from there, but at least one of them did from Oberlin. Um, so we we're living in Central Ohio, um, and. Um, then there was a period where we lived in back in Ohio, in Ohio near Cleveland, for a couple of years. Providence, Boston, um, and then finally down in Birmingham. 
this this sounds like more, more extensive than a military fan. Right. Well, everyone's like, "Oh, are you army brat?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no, <laughs> academic brat." <laughs> wow, I had so, no idea. Okay. Yeah. So and and then the Italy part was, you know, some nursery school and kindergarten and second grade and fourth grade and part of eighth grade and then I did a gap year before coming to Knox and um, and then I didn't really go back and live there again as a you know full time after that um, but you know visits and shorter stays huh. okay. so I, I'm surprised we didn't encounter each other because I was in Evanston 2001 to 2004 and like Stuck in grad school, and so I was I was trying to take over the town. I was trying to check right. out. Right. Well, keep in mind at that point I was not in Illinois. Oh yeah. I was in um, Philly. I oh, think okay. I think that's when we were in Philly. Two thousand one to two thousand four. Yeah. Just wow. About, okay. Um, Carolyn so, in grad school. So, yeah, Carolyn was in grad school. Okay. So so what so what's your path been? Since Knox, right? I guess so, I don't know that story. Oh, okay. So that's a yeah, that's <laughs> sort of jumpy, right? It's, it seems completely disjointed, but for me, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Knox, uh, a fifth year at Knox, and then I remember that, yeah. um, two years in San Francisco at the San Francisco Art Institute, doing my MFA in printmaking. Okay. And then we came back, um, got married. Settled in Champaign-Urbana, where Carolyn finished her undergrad. Okay. So we were there for two years. And then we moved up to Chicago. Um, mom's basement for about three months, right? <laughs> and well, then, um, what's that? I've been there too. I had to, <laughs> my wife and kids and I had to move into my dad's house for three months for yeah. between. So, and then we, we quickly got an apartment um, in Oak Park. And okay. we were there for a little bit under two years, let's call it two years, and then Philly for four and a half, and then back here. And so I've been here since. Okay. Um, so that was right around 04, I think, three, when, when we came back. Okay. But it was back to the west side, not the north side. Okay. Right, so we settled actually back in our old apartment building, different unit, but um, the same place we were in Oak Park. Okay. Um, knowing that we liked the area and that we wanted to stay kind of around here, and then we bought a house in Berwyn. And then okay. we just moved about six months ago. Okay. How so is we, the new place? What's that? How is the new place? It's great. It needs a ton of work, as, you know. The old place did too, as I remember. The old place needed a lot more work. This was, you know, we worked on the old place for like four, I want to say four or five months straight every night before we moved in, um, tearing up floors, walls, putting in windows, new plumbing, you know, electric work, all kinds of stuff. You did a lot of that stuff yourself, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We had a lot of help from uh, Carolyn's father, who is... Now retired, but he's an engineer and very, very handy. Oh, uh, cool. I would Does imagine. his way around the tools. <laughs> uh, and a fantastic woodworker. So, um, you know, when we needed new molding, you know, over a window, he'd show up the following week with a piece of custom-made molding to match the 100-year-old molding we had. I mean, we oh were really God. fortunate that he was able to do stuff like that. And, wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think the only things we didn't do were um, the plumbing, the, the, the hard plumbing, the, like, the big sure. lines and everything. The, you know, w once it was stubbed in, you know, to attach a, a sink or a commode right, right. or a shower, we did all that. But right. running plumbing through the house, um, we contracted was it, was it code violation issues or just a matter of just needing a, needing uh, a, just a general refresh? Yeah, uh, oh, um, it was a disaster. I mean, there was no water pressure. Oh, okay. You couldn't, you know, you could barely flip up the uh, the little stopper on the tub to get water, you know, the extra two or three feet up to the shower. Yeah. Um, and the bathroom needed, it was, you know, was some, some guy, one of the contractors that we were 
working with it one one point referred to it as remodeled, um, <laughs> as opposed to remodeled. The, so the house had an interesting history. It was it was a hundred year old house when we bought it, mm -hmm. and um, the woman there was a woman who lived there her entire life. Her father built the house, and she lived there. Um, until old age, um, and I think she, you know, went into a home and subsequently passed. She sold it to a family um, who was there for five years, and they just did all kinds of ridiculous things to the house that we quickly tried to undo. Sure. Um, you know, and, and some unfortunate things, like they threw out the old clawfoot tub, and they put in a, you know, just a kind of a plastic or, you know, yeah. surround, tub surround. Okay, that's fine. But they didn't bother to close the windows behind it all the way or put the storms down. So they were always complaining that it was cold. And I was like, well, yeah, it was cold. There's air getting it. <laughs> and plus no cough but tub. Um, so, so we, you know, and then in the doing so, right, the old cloth but tubs had, you know, clearance, and then there was piping that would go down through the floor. Well, they didn't bother to cut the pipe and lower everything, they just built up a step in the middle of the bathroom and a platform and then set the tub on that. So you walk into this fairly it's small all bathroom. All the things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> you, know, right, you walk into a bathroom and then a step and a half in, there's a, there's a step up. <laughs> and then, wait, wait it, was easier, it was easier to build a step for everything no, than to just I cut a piece it of It sounds like you were face planning into the tub or something. <laughs> And, and then here's there the best part. falls to just to brush their teeth. Right. And then they did a, a shiny black tile for the floor. So you couldn't actually, it was like, it was like a stealth step. You couldn't see it. <laughs> there was no, the light like just bounced every direction. Yeah. You never discerned where the step was. It was, oh, it was awful. So the sledgehammer came out and we took that thing out and, um, you know. And then, so we did a lot of that. We put in new windows, and we, the, there was a giant hole in the wall that they had hid from us um, by putting a big old painting up on the wall and then, you know, a couch in front of it. So we never lifted the painting off to inspect, you know, who'd think there'd be, like, really like a three-foot diameter hole in the wall, in the old plaster wall. So. Well, so we had a lot of work to do just to get it up to, like, livable condition. But that was the old house. New house, great. Um, it's in a, just a lovely little neighborhood, and um, it seems to be um, kind of turning over a little bit. There have been a couple of houses for sale. There's a few more now for sale. A couple more that we expect are going to come up in the next uh, few months, or I'm sorry, in the spring. So, so it's kind of turning over with some older folks who are retiring and moving to smaller accommodations and younger families are coming in and so we made some friends and it's lovely and it's you know walk to the train and got a lot of bright lights and it's quiet and there's a wildlife we had a blue heron land in the tree in our backyard uh, a couple weeks ago um, big old you know, pterodactyl <laughs> um, and uh, yeah so there's lots you know, it's nice it's it's pleasant it's quiet so what, have, what, have, what have you been doing what's what 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 sucks so, up your days? Well, <laughs> so, work, work, work. Um, you know, I'm still working for the ad agency that I worked for all those many years ago when we first moved here. Um, I've been incredibly fortunate to um, find the place I like and do work I like, and um, it's usually challenging. Some days it's not, and that's okay too, right? Not every day has to be, you know. Sure. Sort of, not every day has to be exciting. Right. Yeah, um, and then when I'm not doing that, I've got um, all kinds of side projects, um, you know, helping people do. Uh, right now, I've got um, a logo, a naming and a logo project for a woman-owned business enterprise from some local folks um, that had contacted me. Um, you know, I had been involved with the Berwyn um, PR campaign, the sort of move to Berwyn initiative. So I had done that for about five years, helped them get that whole thing off the ground, and then don't you have to like counteract Svenguli there somehow? You know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy is he's like a friend of Berwin, but in a weird way, it's, it's done 
it's done more to damage, not damage, <laughs> but to like peg Berwin as a thing and not let. I mean, it put it in a box and like sure. can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it was the first thing you said. Hey, Spanguli, right, Berwin. That's yeah. that's so, the only thing I know. You right. know, it's like and and yeah, so like they got to deal with that. <laughs> I just I just remember there's a bunch of old man bars right along the train tracks. I mean these are places where if you walk in, I was invited to one of these from a friend of mine who who I worked with in Chicago. He was a, a IT manager and stuff. And he lived in he lived in Downers Grove, but he'd stop in Berlin. Everyone went to Berlin. All his friends. Oh, at George's. And that's it. That's George. And this is well, this is a decade ago or something. I was single at the time, and and he had. He brought me in here, and I looked around, and it was, it was an old man's bar. It could easily have been transplanted into a speakeasy just off of Thirty First Street in Chicago. You know, it was, it was perfect for its place. And immediately they looked at me, and then they looked who I was with, and they go, and they hand me a PBR. Just that's what everyone drank. And I was drinking PBRs all the whole time. It would, but you immediately went, oh, okay, you're cool. Sit down, <laughs> and you're drinking PBR. <laughs> a fascinating place because I never walked into a new place before, and felt so immediately um, out of place, and then and then immediately stuck in place. All right, you're right here. You know, uh, you're with that guy. You're cool. This is where you're gonna sit. Right. You know, I went in there. I don't know. It had to be. It was just before we moved, so like eight months ago, and yeah. Uh, yeah, sat down, had a couple of drinks. Now they got the video poker in there. Sure. <laughs> had never had never played that before. Um, now uh, the Pianis right. are next to you, right, or nearby? What's that? The Pianis live nearby at some point, or still do. Yeah, Mark and Lisa and kids live. Um, they live uh, in Central Berwyn. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, stone's throw. And in fact, I mean, we moved one mile exactly west. Like, not any further north or south, maybe, you know, 30 feet north. Um, yeah. But it really, like, we used to be at 35th and Kenilworth, and now we're across, you know, across Harlem at 35th, and the new street is my street, so. Sure. Yeah. It's nice. It's we don't have to, you know. You move somewhere, you might have to like, you know, learn the new grocery store and where the new things are and this and that. Right. We didn't have to do any of that. We didn't want to move any further than that, really. Oh. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, last time you and I saw each other, right? <laughs> he vanished. He's he's out. Yeah. <laughs> he dropped. Excellent. <laughs> I get to dodge whatever question was coming. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 tell me, um, you've you've been, you have a side project going on that, I, and I don't know if it's still going, um, but um, it was making those those wooden. Right. So. What are those? What are those? I I I do not know. Well, you've seen them, right? Like you've seen yeah, them online. Yeah, they look great, but I don't know what they do. <laughs> They're um, it's part of a fraternity um, <laughs> pledge class <laughs> initiative uh, supply no memento memorabilia. No, they're they're not. Um, they're they're real simple serving boards, right? They're like cheese boards, cutting boards, um, presentation boards. That's kind of what I was doing with them. So it's it's just you 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 walk in with with food on the, they're like platters yeah. in a way. Yeah, okay. like you might you might get at a restaurant right if you <clears throat> order like um a cheese plate it might come out or or a little antipasto type thing right. Um, it might come out with um you know two or three cheeses and a couple of sliced cured meats or a little bowl of olives or something like that like. However, one wants to arrange those things, or you know, a couple slices of bread with you know, if you did like a bruschetta or something simple, mm -hmm. um, like that. Could you? All. What's that? 
Could you cut things on them as sure. well? Is it it's sure. not going to like mar the finish or? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing. What I'm doing with them is, and what I'm really interested in is taking locally sourced wood uh-huh. and um, that's you know from trees in and around Chicago that I've either come by or there's a place uh, up on the north side that um, takes the lumber or like collects these things and mills them into big huge slabs you know a couple feet wide a few inches thick and you know ten feet long is it the same kind of wood no well it's whatever's local right so it's okay. black walnut elm ash hickory horse chestnut um, wow. silver maple cherry there's a lot. yeah there's all kinds of really nice stuff um, and it you know some things ash and elm not as popular not as interesting of a uh, wood in terms of the figuring and the grain and all the uh-huh. um, cool stuff to look at. Sure. So the idea, and, and then I, you know, I'm one of those idiots who drives around after a storm and looks for, you know, down trees. And <laughs> whenever when people get, you know, trees cut down, I'm uh-huh. like, driving around looking for stumps, and I've got a garage full of, you know, two or have, three foot hunks of wood. Do you uh, have a Do you have a chainsaw in your in your trunk? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so you got the chainsaw and planers and um, you know all sorts of little tools and axes and stuff to chop away and um, yeah so take this locally sourced wood and um, turn it into something useful and fun to have okay. um, and I started branching out into furniture but that's kind of just at the very beginning of that, making a couple of tables and uh, stuff for somebody. And I've got a computer table here that I've we've got set up. Our, our sorry about that. Hey, you're back. Hey, we're talking about wood, Shrew. Uh oh. Can you hear me now, or is yeah. my is my no. voice squirrely? No, it's not squirrely. You're fine. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, that's okay. So, so what was the, so what was the, so what's the 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 motivation to to, to this? Right. So, I I probably have a little bit of creative um, restlessness, right? The <laughs> restless leg syndrome. I probably have restless attention syndrome. It's not ADHD for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Because I don't want to take away, you know, anything from anyone who actually has it, but like, eh, I've got a hard time like sticking to sort of one project long term. I like to do a lot of things, uh-huh. and you know, I've done so. You know, you had asked before, like, what am I, you know, how am I feeling my days? I'm doing a lot of, you know, art, uh, design, and art direction, sort of on the professional level, and I help uh-huh. people do that. I do sort of all kinds, of, you know, everything from. Like I said, logos to municipal campaigns on the side, helping um, <clears throat> different kinds of clients there. I try and do a fair amount of pro bono stuff, um, working with a group called Row Recovery on Water. Okay. And um, I don't know if you remember hearing about a woman named Jen Gibbons who uh, rowed, did a solo row around Lake Michigan. Um, she's now doing a, a bike around Lake Michigan and it's to raise funds for their group. The recovery on water is particularly for women um, recovering from breast cancer. Um, but they do they do crew, right? They're women of all ages, typically 40 and up, although I think there might be a few who are younger. Um, and they are um, usually in some form of recovery from breast cancer and surgery and this particular activity, although any activity really helps them reduce their um, recurrence rates and their incidence of lymphedema and some other things and um, gives them a kind of a really great um, atmosphere to um, stay active and continue to be healthy. So I've helped that group with a number of things. They're working on getting a, uh, a boathouse on the south branch of the Chicago River, so they're trying to raise funds for that. So doing things like that. Um, May through, I'm sorry, October through May, I do um, a little bit of work at a homeless shelter here on the west side. That's sort of once a month, sometimes twice a month. 
Um, so that's a fairly small commitment. Um, but it does kind of eat into sure. me time because I, I do it on the weekends and I do it as an overnight um, so that it has sort of a minimal impact on family life and work life. And um, and then, yeah, you know, our projects, um, you, you'll remember that I ended up, well, maybe, yeah, you, you'd remember, I think, that I ended up doing fine art at Knox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, and so I try and continue to do that, and every couple of years I generate a new body of work. Um, the not paper real. Thing was awesome, by the way. What's that? The paperclip exhibition. Uh, <laughs> the paper clip. I love, my, vet I love my yeah my clip art. <laughs> so okay, so full circle. That's really where the woodworking started because um, you know there are these paper clips, and I had been. Um, one of the things that I really tried to do was to make my commute time uh, to my job every day sort of useful time. I mean, often I'll just veg out, right? Uh -huh. yeah. Emails, Facebook, read a book, um, watch a movie, whatever on my phone. Um, but for periods, I really try and make that useful time. And so I had done years ago, I think it was in like 06, I started. I was photographing what I saw, which was yeah. the backs of people's heads. Right. And so this became a thing, right? It was. It ended up being, you know, three thousand plus photos that um, I had amassed over the course of about a year. Right. Um, and um, and then that became that became this, you know, distilled down into fifty triptych photographs um, called fellow travelers. Yeah. And um, and then after that, I, there was this clip art project, and that was really like as a fidget. I would take, you know, paper clips that were on documents that were routing through the agency. Right, we sort of everything gets paper clipped together. Um, you print out a brochure you're working on, or some panels, or um, whatever we're making, an ad, and different versions of it, and it's all paper clipped. Well, I would kind of just, as I'm on the phone with somebody or talking, I would pull it off and just kind of mangle it. <laughs> and, and I realized I was doing this, and then I just started throwing them in my desk drawer. Day in and day out. Day in uh -huh. and day out. And lo and behold, one day I'm cleaning out my, you know, my, my desk, and I'm just neatening up, and I'm like, wow, I got, like, hundreds of paper clips here. Surely I can <laughs> interesting with them. Right? Because I think it, part of me is a hoarder. <laughs> and like I don't want to throw anything away because uh -huh. always use it. You never know. Yeah, yeah. So um, and I thought, and I I came up with um, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be interesting? Like these, this, I'm doing it now. By the way, look, I just picked up a paper cl paper clip. I'm I broke it because it was a cheap old one, but <laughs> without even thinking about it, I'm sitting there doing it. Um, the uh, the the idea became. Oh, how can I organize all these things? How can I make them? Um, I was envisioning, envisioning myself as a um, like a nineteenth century explorer, or you know, gentleman of leisure who might um, take up a hobby, say you know, aphid collecting, <laughs> right? or um, uh, Something like that, right? And so this idea uh, of yeah. creating a taxonomy for all these paper clips and a, and a <laughs> history, and maybe doing like you know display cases and and um, sure. sort of a museum quality setup as an Almost art project. Almost like in its in, in, in like a like an ecology. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so I actually started designing labels and um, <laughs> habitats for each of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, one of the other things I had amassed was um, with with small children. You, you know, you get a lot of baby food jars. Uh -huh. And I was like, "Oh, these are pretty cool. I'll oh, just save all these." So, <laughs> when am I ever going to have these again? I did something like that when when I was working at uh, at the the camping store. Um, I started just for some ridiculous reason. Collecting all those, you know, those little packets of silica gel you get oh, yeah. in your shoes. Yeah. I would, I was, I would collect them, and then people started noticing I was doing it, and yeah. so people would give them to me. Oh, sweet. And so, after I a while, I started opening them up and pouring them into like gigantic jugs of Gallo. You know, yeah. like 
after they're empty, of course. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> and then, I had these these this these giant jugs of silica gel, and um, just recently, I kind of I was like, I I've been carrying these around for over ten years, and I don't know what to do with them. And I asked what I could do, and I don't think I really got any. I would I would post that up on Craigslist or like Chicago Artist Resource or somewhere <laughs> like that, and like somebody will do something goofy with that. Probably give it to somebody else, but yeah. <laughs> right, because it says "do not eat." Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so wow. Yeah, so so right, this kind of silly idea that I would, yeah, you know, could do something with this detritus of my work life. Right. I mean, that's really kind of how I think of it too. Like it's just it's it's it is 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 the cast offs. It's the stuff you don't use. So, um, but I like that, and and from an art standpoint, I like. I like the repurposed. I like the um, the stuff that would otherwise be thrown away. Um, mm -hmm. I also like off the shelf stuff. So, right, not inventing something out of whole cloth, but really like you know wandering through a store and saying, "I wonder what I could you know what I could do with that thing," or vice versa. I really need something to do X, and you kind of wander around till you find some existing product that does it, or Maybe it informs your idea and changes it a little bit. So I, I had this idea of doing this crazy taxonomy and history, and I developed all these labels for everything that was very, like I said, very museum-y and sort of backstory, and was trying to come up with a naming convention for all of the different kinds of sort um, of genus species of the, of the species and yeah forms of paper clips and <laughs> you see this thing. This one's pretty straight, but has a little hook at the end, and, there you go. Um, and it's got a little bit of a hook down there, there it is. Anyway, and so um, that kind of, it felt really forced after a while. <laughs> um, I can see that. Yeah, it just it wasn't coming together quite right, but I had all these baby food jars and I was putting stuff in them, and then I was setting up the little, the little guys and um, in there and trying to create these little habitats for them, like little dioramas. Um, and uh, like you'd see, like a little, you know, a stuffed marmoset at the zoo, right? You know, with a little <laughs> painted background and whatever. So, um, anyway, that idea went away, and it became about these like little miniature sculptures, um, kind of envisioning them as these gigantic things. They, it's not like they were maquettes or little small versions of something big, but they were. They were sort of Lilliputian, right? So, like, to tiny people, they would seem the big size thing that I kind of envisioned them as. And um, I went to my father-in-law's workshop, and just he has, you know, scrap bins of, of cutoffs of wood, and I just got all kinds of things and took them and shaped them. And, they're, you know, they're nice woods. There's, you know, ebony and cocobolo and bubinga and cherry and walnut and... Um, all kinds of zebra wood and all kinds of funky, crazy woods. And uh, I went and bought like a little sander and started making bases for these shapes and tried to match them up and make um, make things interesting and sure. for myself, right? And, mm -hmm. and I ended up again another sort of component of my dysfunction is this idea of multiples. <laughs> and um, I kind of started. I mean, it started a long time ago, but you know, the fellow traveler series was like you know. 150 photographs. It was, you know, or sort of triptych, so 50. And of these sculptures, I just set a number of 100 to do. I thought that would be an appropriate number to make something so small take up the amount of space that I felt like it needed to take up. Um, I think there's a photo of the full set on my website in the clip art section. Right? Sure. I think the first one or two photos might be. There's a title scene. There's the the clip art title slide, right? And then I think the next slide may be the full like everything in the windows. Full collection. Yeah, it may, maybe not though. Maybe I took that down. I can't remember. Um, so that was the clip art and and making that wood, um, all those wood bases. There I was. I had the tools now. I had you know sort of learned a little bit about how to work with wood. Mm -hmm. um, or some of the properties of wood, if not really how to work with it. Um, but started getting familiar with the hardness of different woods and um, mm -hmm. 
how well they were um, suited to my, you know, the things that I like to do. So, um, so I finished that, and then along comes Christmas time, and I think, oh, wouldn't it be nice instead of buying things for family if I made something? Well, I have these wood tools, so why not huh? buy some wood and um, try and make something? I don't know what. So I kind of looked around and saw some people making some like cutting board type things, and I thought, oh, I could do that. That's not that hard. I have a jigsaw. I have a sander. So yeah. Um, so I did that, um, and they were everyone seemed to like them and showed them to a couple of people and they said oh you should totally make more of these so then wow. I, and that was that was kind of how it came about that's a total that's a total evolution that's yeah. <laughs> starting with paper clip, paper clips that's yeah. how did, how, did awesome. the clip art, how did the clip art get at the library how did you hook up with the vet um how did that work out i think we bumped into each other at Knox homecoming oh yeah and she said, hey, would you, she's like, I'm wanting to start doing, I have a little bit of space, a, a display cabinet. Would you want to do a little show of any kind? And um, I said, I have just the thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, I'm working, yeah. on, I'm working on this clip art stuff, and it will be a couple more months, but I should be done. And So that was it. I mean, it was serendipitous for sure. So I've never is- gone and pursued any kind of a show. Um of my work, it really like they've fallen in my lap, or and, and not often. I mean, I've showed you know a couple of times, handful of times. I don't. And 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 it seems like like everything that you're doing, it just comes completely without intention. <laughs> like, and and I think that that's like that that that's so refreshing because it's not like you're you're you know. Steepling your fingers, thinking of your millions that you'll acquire, as you you know. No, I'm usually you, sitting here going, thinking of the millions that I'm not acquiring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it's it, it's it's that kind of thing that like that seems so much more alive. It's organic, because you just have this desire to make this this thing happen, right. and you don't know why, and you don't know it's it just seems like it should. Yeah, it's interesting when you say. When you say without intention, um, I, I, I guess you're right. Like it does. I mean, it seems very haphazard in a way, uh-huh. and it is. I mean, it's one thing A leads to B to C, mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't a predictable thing. I mean, you guys are right. Like paper clips to you know locally sourced wooden serving wear, service wear, or whatever. Um, not obvious how one gets there, um, and yet you know when I make art. Like I'm very much about intention. Um, that is to say, like whatever I'm doing, I want to have thought through it. I want to make sure that it holds up under some kind of scrutiny. Um, that it has a, at least an internal logic that I've considered and thought about and I'm comfortable with. Um, now, does that happen before you go start doing it, or does it happen along the way? Yeah, it happens along the way, and, and okay. it's. An, it's a. Um, it's, it's definitely like an evolving process, part yeah. of the process, right? Like you start off. Ooh, so the paper clips are a great example. I had these paper clips. I was like, oh, I could do something with that, right? And then I start thinking through this project of the the nomenclature and the taxonomy and the setting and the habitat and the <laughs> you know the the labels and the museumishness of it all and the like, you know. The 1830 or 1887-ishness of it, and um, and uh, and it sort of fell apart under scrutiny, under execution. Not so much, I, I guess, not not just kind of thinking about it in the abstract. Although part of that, it just did seem start to seem a little silly and forced. But even in the doing of it, it didn't feel ultimately terribly satisfying. Um, I did a couple of exam, you know couple of them and um, I just it, it wasn't it wasn't fulfilling whatever the need was okay. um, it didn't keep me interested and amused enough to pursue it further okay um, and ultimately it seems to me to be about that for me like 
Now, people make art for all kinds of reasons. They've got all sorts of things in their heads and things they want or need to express. And like, and well, my that begs the question then. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. it begs the question then: Does the is the woodworking uh, right. more satisfying? Is in other words, have you have you found at least a temporary outlet where okay, now I'm getting closer to what I'm thinking about in terms of satisfying? There's no, there's no closer. <laughs> okay. Right, like it's never. I'm not. I'm not like pursuing some, you know, some unattainable goal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's. Uh, it is deeply satisfying in all kinds of ways, and so for the time being, that is what I'm doing. I see. When it stops being interesting and fulfilling and satisfying, then I will move on. Um, hopefully. Not before I've recouped some of the money that I've spent in, in purchasing <laughs> equipment, <laughs> because it's I mean it's weird as as a you know as an artist I was never that comfortable with the monetization of the art or the commercialization of it. That's pr probably part of why I don't um, haven't made too much of an effort to show um, or to try and show I should say. Um, I don't like the idea of pricing, you know, the way we all think about pricing our artwork. Mm -hmm. It's it, for for all kinds of reasons it makes me uncomfortable, and um, I, you know, at the same time I don't have any problems pricing freelance work or um, right logo design or art direction or things like that. Um, and I did struggle with the pricing of um, of the the wooden boards too. That wasn't um, that wasn't the easiest thing for me to sure to do, and even still, I'm like, oh, okay, I just I'll give you this one. I don't like you know. There's a <laughs> lot of that. I'll just give it to you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, because there's something really satisfying about giving somebody a gift rather than receiving, you know, forty bucks or. And is that is that is that the 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 items that that you? Created from your own your own thoughts and, and and work rather than because it seems like there's a difference between what you make professionally versus what just kind of generates from your own your own brain and your own it's it's almost like like how how can I put a price on this right you know it's <laughs> yeah and so. Really, I mean, I do I, it drives my wife bananas, but like I do go and I, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I'm doing this project here. I'm doing these, you know, six boards for somebody, and that's going to pay for a new saw and a couple more pieces of wood and some, you know, and uh, you know, a new filter for the dust extractor. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, or it could buy a week's worth of groceries. Right. Yeah, the, the practical <laughs> comes into play. Right. I'm like, oh. It's strange to see. Uh, let's, I, I wanted to go a different direction for a moment. Um, how are the girls? The girls are good. Uh, how, is that, how is that changing? Because... Because Cameron and I, Cameron's got girls, and I've got boys, and, and you've got girls. How is I, I, I'm trying to understand our different styles and how we've evolved. How how many how many girls do you have? Seventy three. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have two: a six year old, a uh, six and a half year old, and a an almost three year old. Okay. Okay, so you're you're in the same kind of like house of women. Thing that I am. I, you know, I. My body seems to respond really well to estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> um, like it, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, when they're teenagers, I'm sure I'll be somewhere very different. But right now, like it's, yeah, it's it's cool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I like and, and you know I mean so the, my older daughter has is in a class with um, mostly boys. Really. So you know, we volunteer, we spend time, or play dates, or whatever. There, um, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of that boy energy, and 
I'm really like I'm pleased with the girl energy. Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah. It's a lot less destructive. I, it's a I, lot more. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's more to my liking right now. I'm sure I'm sure I'll feel differently in you know ten years, but it's it's not even ten years, Tomasa. It's yeah, well, <laughs> no, well, it's, you're right. It's, I, it starts it's still, at I've got a I've got a ten year old and like listening to the 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 politics of fourth grade yeah. is like oh my gosh that's happening already oh god. So <laughs> tell me, it's 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 a it's a it's a like Lord of the Flies sort of scenario, or is it is it that bad socially on in the fourth grade? It, it yeah, it's starting. It's 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 like there's the queen bee thing, and okay. and the 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 wolf pack, and and if you're if you don't fit in, then you get taken down. I mean, there was. There was a there was a girl in my in my daughter's class who uh, left the school because the because the girls were just so vicious. It was like I I can't believe this. This is crazy. But I I mean I, that's what I was afraid of dealing with in high school. But I don't know. You know there it, things could go any which way. You know with with this. I mean maybe she'll get it out of she, she'll be done with it early. I'm I'm crossing my fingers. So good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little nervous because mine are going to a new school and in the fourth grade, and I'm not I'm not up on the modern social pecking orders. I don't remember having them when I was in the fourth grade. I'm yeah. You know I of course I was bussed around the city all over the place, so it there there wasn't really that that um. That everyone was in the same, um, everyone was in the same boat all the time. There was always new faces where I, where I went to school, um, but they're walking to a different neighborhood school where everyone has been there since kindergarten. So it's kind of interesting how they're going to play it out. You well, know? It probably takes six months for. Oh yeah, and and to you know, out. I also have to trust my guys' instincts, and they're pretty. They they've got they've got some solid instincts from their mother's side, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> they, they got they got nothing from me. <laughs> I can't help them. So Shree, uh, is it yeah. is it time for the D twenty questions? I think it might be. I think it might be. Um, I don't if know you... if you remember this portion of the, of the thing, Tomazo, or if, or if anyone ever explained it to you. For all of our, uh, there's a list of twenty questions that some are silly, some are Thought-provoking, some are, and and so we have a, a D20 from an old Dungeons yep. and uh, we you get to, you are going to be asked one uh, up to six questions. So this one decides how many questions you're going to get. This decides what those questions are going to be. Great. Okay. So first, you're going to decide how many questions you're going to get. Oh, looks like it's five, five questions. So it says there. So let me open up the, the the questions themselves. Give me a moment, please. And is this a rapid fire thing, or is it a? No, this could go as long as you want or as short as you want. It's okay. there are times where if the question is interesting enough, we, we start going to a separate discussion about it. It's so it it's up to you. Uh, let's see. Here we go. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to roll the dice, and I don't see you guys because I'm reading the questions, but okay. I'll show you what the die is. And one, uh, one page, there we go. So yeah. first question, number 15. 15 is, is there a food that your taste buds automatically reject and describe in as much detail as you feel necessary. Um, clarify for me taste buds reject. Like 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 if I taste caraway, I it just it hits my tongue and then it immediately I spit it out. It's no. like I don't even think about it. It's just like blah. No. No, um, I do imagine there's a skeeve out factor um, with a couple of things, but 
they're not foods I've tried yet. But so, no, there's no. I've been able. I've never spat a food out. Like not as an adult, I've never spat something out. <laughs> <laughs> so you have no. You have no immediate nause, nausea trigger. Correct. Wow. Now, how about how about even something from uh, your first uh, hangover? Like I can't be in the in the room with Malibu rum. Ah, right. No, there are some things that I I will stay away from, but even those things I know um, that there was a specific incident. Like <laughs> yes, um, gin generally is not. I you know drank way too much of it straight out of the bottle at too young of an age and was sick for days. And then, so Jim's no good. And um, I was sick, and um, it was Easter. I was a kid, and the smell of mint jelly, really the idea of mint jelly, <laughs> um, sets me off. But, like, I know... As in, as in the concept of mint jelly? The, the yeah, there's the really no concept of mint jelly <laughs> Who the hell came up with? Yeah. Like, okay. I'm, I'm totally down with mint. I think it's great. You put it on things. You put it in a dessert. You put it in a dish. Great. The, the little leaf. But, like, why jelly it? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Well, and, and there's no there's no quicker way to ruin lamb than... Number 19. Number 19 says... What is your favorite kind of pizza and why? And describe in detail. How much detail can you? <laughs> oh no, okay. there could be there could be reasons for the different combinations on it. Okay, favorite pizza. Right, this isn't too hard. Um, it's a quattro stagioni pizza. Um, it's the the Four Seasons pizza, but basically any sort of a Neapolitan style, um, you know, thin crust, single serving. Pizza cooked in a 900 degree wood fired brick oven for about a minute and a half, um, made with the exact proportions of um, the type. I think it's 40 quadruple out flour. Um, caputo flour is important, sure. um, but just the right amount of like fresh crust, some Marzano tomatoes, and a little bit of mozzarella. And then anything you want to add on based on, you know, what else you're doing or what else you're having with the meal. So it sure. could just be a simple margarita, margarita pizza with, you know, tomato basil and um, mozzarella. It could be um, the quattro stagioni, which has the olive and the artichoke heart and the ham and um, the cheese. That's, that's a nice one. That's, that's, that's a good one. The Italian gets this question. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, <laughs> me. I rolled a 19 again, so let's roll again. Rolled a 15 already. Oh, here we go. This is a 6. Uh, 6. What neurosis do you have that you care to admit? Yeah. And how does it manifest itself? That can be a one-hour topic just for you, Sri. Now stop it, there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 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 ba By the way, my basement flooded, and usually my my big computer rig with all the stuff that is in the basement. So everything got moved, and the kids are all playing in the first floor. And so I reconnoitered to my room, to where a laptop is here. But now they're asleep, and the wife's behind me, and she's enjoying the conversation and. Of course, you'd like to discuss my neuroses to anyone. So nice. It's good to have a peanut gallery. Nice. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. nice there's people around. Yeah. Uh, there's an audience. Uh, remind remind me what neuroses. Right. Remind me what a neurosis is again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anxiety. That doesn't really qualify as a neurosis, does it? No, not necessarily. That's, that's a more of a one if you want. No, that's a more of a straight up mental disorder, I think. Um, <laughs> we're not being I, too. You know, strange enough, I never <laughs> anxious about anything since when we were young. Yeah, you know, was it was that the twenty something confidence that we all had, or no? I'm trying to think, what serious neuroses? Let me think about that a little bit. 
Okay. That's an interesting one. I'm certainly willing to answer it, but I'm not sure. So, wow. so who's, so, so where are, you, where's your computer room? Where's, where are you, where are you? Sitting? I'm in my living room. You're in your living room. Um, okay. You know, I used to do a lot of freelance work, and we maintained office, like we maintained our own offices, and um, that kind of went away with the move. We moved into it's a bigger house, but in the the Sort of disposition of the rooms is much better, but there are fewer overall rooms. So um, it's a three-bedroom house, not a four-bedroom house. So the fourth bedroom, which was office slash guest room, is now not existent. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the living room, you know, I don't know if you can tell, it's a fairly long. Yeah. Um, yeah. Room and there's you know there's a piano at the back. There's sort of two or three discrete areas, and so we felt like the computer computer use is much less than it used to be. Um, and so we were comfortable just kind of tucking it in behind the couch, and I'm making a table for it that'll um, blend in nicely. Uh, I've got a slab of walnut that's about uh, four foot by two foot, a little oh, less okay. than two foot. Um, big, thick, two-inch slab of walnut with uh, live edges down the sides where the bark was. Oh, um, oh wow. So that's as soon as I make finish making these. That was the first <laughs> project that I was going to do, but then somebody actually wanted to pay me to make some tables, so that got precedent. <laughs> um, so I'm working on theirs. There, I'm doing six um, end tables or night tables oh. for three different pieces of furniture, all out of walnut, all that same like live edge stuff. Does you, so are, do you do this all by yourself, or just sometimes you involve a father-in-law? Because he sounds like someone you'd be excited about this. Um, well. You know, it's funny. He does... I don't know if you can see sort of behind me over here the this fireplace. Uh -huh. Yeah. He actually built the mantle around it. It had been covered in the whole thing had been covered in like pink marble tile. So I pulled all that off. There was the brick underneath, the original brick. So I restored all that, you know, scraped it, got all the adhesive off, filled in the holes, right. uh, and repainted it. And then it just had a um, about a three-inch wood mantle going across the top. It's a pretty standard treatment, you know, right. simple way. And we wanted something a little bit more um, integrated, so he built that. Wow. And then I don't know if you can see kind of further back over my shoulder, there's a radiator, and it runs the... Mm -hmm. uh, there are two of them, one on either side of the fireplace, and they run underneath the windows. And so what we're going to build... Next is continuous, for, continuing from the the fireplace mantle um, and radiator. surround is yeah. going to be radiator covers slash window seats. Nice. I'll have some oh. shelving underneath on the ends for some books, and then a nice little bench seat there underneath the window, and that'll be on both sides. So it'll actually run the full length of the wall, which I think is about twenty two feet. I'm envisioning the old the old benches in front of the window, the, the bay window in front of the old teak house. The, yeah, the, I mean it's not dissimilar to that. I mean these will function as radiator covers as well. Sure. Um, and uh, we picked up a few design motifs. Um, all the windows in the house have uh, side lights, right? So there's sort of a main window with you know a, a double hung window, and then on the sides are um, four panes going up. And sure. so we sort of mimic that on the side of the um, of the fireplace there. Very nice. And pick up. So there's, so so there's a geometric he, part he's going. Yeah, and he, but so he's really he does this kind of stuff. He's built a lot of the furniture in our house, mm -hmm. um, most of which we designed, right, or sketched up. Hey, I want this with a this and a that and this kind of a feature. And he's fantastic at that stuff. Right. What I do, though, is, like, so he's doing all this joinery and fitting things together and precision, whatever, a la engineer. I mean, that's kind of who he is, right? Mm -hmm. He's all about the numbers and the math. And um, and I am much more freeform. I like to look at a long piece of, like, plank or board and cut interesting shapes out of it that sort of pick up some of the nuances in the grain and the wood and um, no joinery. Right, like single pieces. Somebody was like, "Oh, well, you could take. If you can't quite get it out of this one board, you can glue these two together, and you'd never know." And stop right there. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> lining anything up. I'm not gluing anything up. It's got to be sort of what nature gave me, right? Okay. What I can find off of nature's shelf. So going back to neuroses, it sounds like there's a little bit of an OCD thing going. 
<laughs> you know, never diagnosed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've wondered. I've wondered if that's the case a little bit, but it's never sure. gotten in the way. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have two more questions. Great. Let's number four. I had to take off the fez because it was getting a little warm in here. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, there's not much left. Um, what's at the top of your bucket list, and why? I don't have a bucket list. You don't have a bucket list. You don't know what? List. Three, that, that, nobody admits to the bucket list. That question is not a very good question. Uh, really? Yeah. People do not, if you not... You what, a dozen list. people? You're, and, and a dozen of our friends, and no one's admitted to a bucket list. It, yeah, whenever the questions come up, it is not, it has not been... It wasn't a matter of admitting to it or not. Like, I've really never sat down and gone, what do I want to do before I die? No, I, I, you know what? I can, I can kind of... I can kind of agree with you. I mean, I guess I don't think I've ever done that kind of thinking either. Well, I don't know that we're of an age to necessarily worry about that yet. Oh, so, uh, I heard an interesting fact. Well, I assume it's a fact. I heard it on the Internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, men... The human male does not mature until age forty-three. Yes, right. I saw that one too. Right, I just saw this. I, was like, I that sent that to my wife, and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to mature next October. This is awesome." And, and that actually felt about right. I was like, "Yes, I do feel like I'm finally who I am." Um, just within the last couple of years. Um, oh, shit, I'm a late bloomer then. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, Right, like, not that I'm not going to keep growing and changing, but I feel like I know myself finally. Right, the foundation is there. The right. foundation is finally. And, and you know, it's it's like why teenage boys are a disaster and can't be trusted with anything because their chemistry is completely blah, right. It's going all over the place and hormones and da -da -da -da, all that stuff. And I feel like the last vestiges of some of that are. Um, at least stable. <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> it might flare up like a like yeah, a, like not a bad gone, thing. but uh, but at least like done messing with me. Yeah, so. I, I I concur. I think that I think that we there there are ups and downs as you get closer and closer to a certain age. I guess forty three, but I I don't know that I would pinpoint it at that exact date, but I, uh, around there, you know. Yeah. It, as it, as I as I passed through forty, I realized that a lot of the old went away. You know, hmm. uh, a lot of the old, a lot of the a lot of the old habits started slowing down or kicking off. Um, a, 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 an urgent sense to be more uh, organized, I guess, or more in control of the chaos around me, and and that didn't really come to pass until I was well into my 40s. In my 30s, I was just dealing with the chaos as it came. But I, I went the other direction. Really? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to worry about everything being all orderly and nice and neat and packaged up and dotting and I's and crossing and T's and, like, right. yeah, all of that and, like, making sure, like, all the buckets are aligned and filled correctly. Like, I just I stopped worrying about it. What well, a difference it makes. I, I guess maybe. <laughs> I guess, I guess, no. Tommy, I guess I wasn't. I wasn't saying it correctly. I guess I'm. I'm. I started. I started worrying less about the little things, and started really figuring out the the bigger thing. Tommy's been talking for a while, dear. I just thought I'd interject. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got one more question, right? It's becoming a comedy routine all of a sudden. Okay, yeah. last question. Last question. Number eight. This could be a silly one. I don't know. Let's see. Number eight. No, I'm not going to ask that question. Roll again. I'm going to roll again. That's, that's a... 
number 11. Now I have to dumb one too. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is your secret geeky pleasure? Geeky pleasure? It's something that, uh, something that would... You no, know, I'll, I'll just leave it there. A secret geeky pleasure. But for no other reason than peanut galleries tisting me in the back. So. Right. I don't know if it's geeky, but... Um, and these days I'm pretty comfortable enough to admit just about everything, so <clears throat> there's not much secret either. But I got to tell you, <laughs> when um, when my daughter um, was old enough to play with Legos, that was that was like I was in heaven. I was like, finally, I can relate to you. <laughs> and I, so I I busted out my like 40 year old Lego set. Um, and we have not had to purchase much Legos yet, um, because it's. I mean, I've kept it all these years. Wow! So, um, and kids have come over and they're like, "What are these? These are really. I've never seen these pieces. These aren't yeah. in any of the sets." I'm like, "Yes, that's right, my. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, young Padawan." <laughs> um, and and I actually have um, some Legos from a couple of different eras, so that the the holes on top and the um, the connectors underneath are different shaped, certainly than they are now. Wow. So they used to be not a solid hole on top, like a solid uh, raised area, but um, it was a, what do you call it, a cylinder, um, right? So it just had the outside and then it was hollow in the middle. And then the underside had X's, like for a four brick it was three X's. And... Um, and then it went to three holes, right? And um, and they're now different. Yeah, I forget what they're, but they're they're a little different than they are now. But then the top changed too, of course. Sure, to match the. Uh, so like, and I still have. Yeah, those, yeah, you know. you know your Legos, man. That's I, reasonably. That's worked. impressive. That's. <laughs> um. So what's the other secret geeky thing? Um. That's it. That's cool. That's that's a, that's a great one. Yeah. Are you uh, are you thinking about homecoming this year? By the way, I don't think so. Um, I it's might. Off year. What's that? It's an off year. Yeah. It's an off year, which I'm not inclined to do just cause. And um, but you know, it's within a few years, so there obviously are people I would love to see. Um, I think life is going to intervene too. Has been intervening too much for much time away. Um, sure. We're not for reasons that are way too complicated to go into here. We're not really doing a lot of traveling with the girls right now. Sure. Um, so <clears throat> that and they both get car sick like instantly. So that's <laughs> yeah. That that, that that turns that to a negative part of the thing. yeah. No, it's no good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure that we'll do any of that, um, any long drives. Which, you know, it's not that long. It's four hours, but it could take yeah. us eight, eight to nine, depending on how much <laughs> puke there is. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, I, do you have any questions? Are, are we... I You know, we're, I think now we're, we're dipping into your time, so... No, we're cool. Um... I already did the dishes earlier, so I'm I'm good there. Okay, um, good, good. No, whatever else you guys want to ask, it's fine. Oh man. Um, and what did you... yeah, well, I there was I. It's just good catching up with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, that's fun. <laughs> and uh, we're. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get. Um, just uh, us to after Eric. I've been trying to get us all. Reconnected as best as we could. Uh -huh. um, keeping just keeping an eye on people, you know, just to, sure. just to just to make sure that we haven't lost any anybody. You know what I mean? Um, and one of the ways that I felt that the, to do it is is this, just to do sure, and just to just to catch up and just to have feature somebody. You know, uh, it's it's mostly Cameron's idea, but I, my alternative motive is to just make sure that. 
I don't know if they're happy or healthy, but at least that they're around and they're caring. Right. People are interested in, you know. It's nice. It's a good idea. Yeah. They, it's again, good idea. I'm I'm just the guy hanging out with Cameron. Cameron's Cameron's the brains of the outfit. Well, you know, and I mean ideas like this, like I think we all have thoughts, you know, in this genre or this kind of oh, I should do this project or that, or wouldn't it be cool to do a you know, a video blog or whatever, but you guys have done a bunch of them now and like kept it going and have a format and I think that's pretty cool. Um, Thank you. That's it's hard to keep up that energy and commitment, as I know. Um, yeah. Right, yeah. the starter of many projects. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I've I've learned a lot. I mean, it's you know, Facebook is one thing, and I love it because of what it does do, but it doesn't do enough. You know, you can't hear the voice. You can't you can't really you can't ask questions in the same way, and right. and and you know. Facebook is just this lovely facade, yeah. and I feel like, like you know, actually going and talking with people, it's like reconnecting and seeing, you know, just how everybody's, you know, you know, made it through these last twenty years, and everybody's got a different story, and it's really cool. It just doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't even matter where you are. It's right. just that you did that stuff. Sure. Yeah. Do you? Do you ever get frustrated with Facebook? Like, oh, I'm gonna quit this thing. I'm done. Uh, yes and no. Uh, I'm a bit of an addict, so it, <laughs> I, 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 and I think in part because I'm fascinated by the different perspectives I'm seeing, and I don't know if it's part of the algorithm that's just showing me things, showing me faces that I see all the time. Right. People I interact with. It, it really doesn't matter. There are times where I'm just, I'm just, what, I'm trying to figure out, and much like I did when we were younger, is trying to figure out what the theme is that everyone's moving to for the day. Just to, why, why are they gravitating towards this? What's, what's going on over here? And then there's this little outlier group that's really just kvetched about something down here, and that fascinates me. You know. Uh, it's it's almost like a, watching a social experiment in real time, mm. and and how do I fit into it or not? Um, how am I digesting it versus these people? You know, uh, and and then there's the advocacy part of it. There are times where I'm I personally take up a an idea and try and run with it and see what kind of conversation I get out of it. Uh, either accidentally or purposely. Uh, my thing about guns, for example, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very afraid of them. I'm openly, I openly say so. I don't understand the gun culture, and I attempt to understand it from my pro-gun friends and my anti-gun friends. As to am I, uh, I'm on the fence about it. You know what I mean? I, I, I just don't understand the culture, but I understand the function and. Why people might or why people not, and it it to me it's used as a tool to continue a conversation that I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't have this conversation with workmates or with family or with right. you know, but I can have it here as an open forum with people that I, I we've debated sure. these things ad nauseum when when we were younger or even just last week. Right. Well, the other thing it does for I, me, it, it gets us all connected. I can, I can, yeah. I can get everyone. Hey, Piani's playing over it, over there. Let's all meet. You know, right? It's an easy tool for us to, to do that with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I guess my my thing is that is is uh, a while ago I, I learned that you never trust the internet, never believe it. It's not real. You know, just always, you know, keep a veil between yourself and the internet so that, you know, that you don't get sucked in and believe, start believing things that people are saying or, or what's out there. And because you just don't know that it's true. And, and actually, I've thought about it. And because I'm like, like obsessive about philosophy and stuff, I'm, right. I kind of I see it as a, as a model for consciousness. Um, in that you just really can't get to the reality, you know, through that veil, and and 
and I feel like like the internet is doing things culturally that it's fascinating because it's it's kind of thrusting that yeah. that unsurety right in our face because you know at a rapid and and large scale you know you, you used to be able to go to a library and you know look in the card catalog you go get your book you know for the subject you were going to look at and you'd find what you wanted to find out you'd read it and that was that was that was the case now you you go online you type in your search and because it's so easy you get a million different things in Google and tons of them are, are different and now you can't just go to that book and you're not just satisfied seeing those those words because now it's so easy just to go down the line and click them and everybody's got something different to say and now we're like fuck you know what's real and I, I feel like that's that's kind of a something that's 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 happening to us culturally we're starting to realize that things are a lot less stable than we thought at one point um, and and I get sucked in all the time I get you know those those fake news stories that are just so compelling you just right. want them to be true right You're excited when you find out about the ship in in the Mississippi River in St. Louis and you're just right. like you know that's amazing that's great you know there's still wonderful things out there and then it's and then you find out that it's bogus and you're like and after after I get hit with a number of those then I'm like okay I'm stepping away <laughs> this I I'm just going to put put down the toy for a little bit and just you know recenter I, yeah it's it's fascinating right because I, I view it so cynically um, like I love it. I love that I've reconnected with kids that I was in second grade with in Italy. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? Or that yeah, you know, I had misremembered my um, when I was in Italy in eighth grade. <clears throat> my best friend was a guy named Tommaso, and um, I misremembered his um, his surname. And so I would look for him online and try and find him. We couldn't, like I just was spelling it wrong. Um, and eventually, though, I found him on Facebook. Like, how cool is that? And we reconnected yeah. and so on. But, you know, at the same moment as that's happening, I, like, there's this voice in my head that's reminding me that it's all a giant distraction. Uh -huh. like, that it's all, um, it's all kind of, it's chuff. It's stuff that's thrown out there to, like, make you take your eye off the ball, whatever that is, right? Whether it's, you mm -hmm. know, look at this so you don't see that I'm, you know, robbing from you over here with, you know, your pensions or, you know, and it's political or it's, you know, or it's geopolitical and it's, you know, let's not pay attention to what's going on in, uh, in Syria. Look, here's another fascinating clickbait story about a ship in the Mississippi or... Yeah. Uh, cats. Right? Or, or, yeah, I mean, whatever, or cats, right? Yeah. Um, not that they aren't funny and that they aren't amusing, but they are no better than, you know, sitting there watching reruns of Three's Company. Um, no, you're right. And and uh, I I think one of the things about doing the woodworking for me is like, yeah, I'm not engaging with anybody else, but at least I'm not doing that. I'm not sitting there, you know, responding to or trying to you know, find pictures of. You know, doctoring up cute pictures of myself to post. Um, and I'll post stuff occasionally. Although I did sort of remove all pictures of the kids um, mm -hmm. about four or five months ago, six months ago, whenever it was, because I I had this moment of, oh, yes, they're cute. Yes, everyone wants to see them, or at least enjoy seeing them when I post, and that's all fine. But um, really, they aren't having any say in the publication of their own likeness, right? They're not, I'm putting stuff out there that's just of them. It's not, a, you know, incidental family pictures where they're in it or I'm in it, that's one thing. Um, you know, so you post something, you know, you're, you and the boys go to the Museum of Science and Industry, that's great. But, like, if I'm taking pictures of the girls and or just, you know, even around and, and it's just, you know, a cute picture of one kid or another, I realize, yeah, they may, like, you know, the older kid has expressed a desire, like, don't take my photo. I don't want to. I don't want to see pictures of me. 
okay, so I gotta stop, right? Like, yes, yeah. she's expressed a wish, and like, I, what am I, what am I posting it for if not for just the karma, right? Mm -hmm. and, like, mm -hmm. getting a lot of likes. I know, yeah. right? I know those kids are photogenic. They're gonna take a nice picture, and like, it's gonna be cute and charming because they're, you know, curly-headed girls, and right, and blah blah blah. But happy, healthy, and all that. But at the same time. Right. What's what's it really for? It's just kind of adding to the noise out there too, and that's true. they're mostly selfish reasons to do it. I haven't so thought I, of it that way. And well, and and I think everyone's got to make their own choice, but you know, um, and you know, maybe I'm being a little extreme for some, but like for me, I was like, yeah, what am I doing it for? Like, I send my parents and you know, in-laws the, the cute pictures of them via email, so it's not even like they, you know. I'm doing it for them, or I could create just a friends list or a you know, family list and only show the photo to them if that were my means, but just sort of broadcasting it to everyone. Like, yeah, people don't need to see that. I mean, they can, they might like to, but strangely, in the four or five months since I've done it, nobody's actually contacted me and said, hey, would you post some more pictures of your girls? <laughs> Nobody would ever right? do that. Right? Nobody's done that, so... Nobody would ever do that. And, and right. the, other, the other thing about it is that and, and it's interesting because we were talking with our friend Sean Fielding um, the other night we had a midnight club and, and uh, he came and we were talking about, you know, you're, you look like a great dad and everything. People were just, and, and he, he made the point, well, yeah, but nobody's there taking pictures of me yelling at them, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it creates this, like I said, this facade. You've got this, this veneer of, of happy and healthy and everything's great. Yep. And, and you know, we're not invited to see the other side. And that's, right. and I think that, I think that, 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 that people shouldn't, but at the same time, I believe that internet usage needs to be active on the user, not on the provider of the input, not, not on the content provider. The user should know this is a facade, this there is limitations to what I'm experiencing here, and and you know that's why it it, it really should be like the internet brought to you by Hanna Barbera. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I mean a little bit, right? Like it's it is it's, a, it's sort of a giant cartoon in some ways. Uh -huh. Um, right. You can draw whatever you want, and you know it's funny that she said you know you don't see people's the backstory or like the heartache or the, the misery or you know or the yelling or the you know uh -huh. that sportsmanship or the you know the bigotry or whatever like everyone sort of chooses to paint a rosy picture except for there's a whole bunch of people who just paint the lousy picture right yeah and, yeah there's and, and then, then there are the people who kind of air their their uh -huh. their laundry that way and this and that's you know a just channel that gets turned off pretty quick. Yeah, although sometimes the train wreck's the best part. <laughs> like it's way more interesting. Only if it only if it's it's sudden and violent and then stops. <laughs> if if it's just a long whine of the you know, the breaks yeah. oh. <laughs> going on and on and on. Well Yeah. I've yeah. I've got some I've got some anti vaxxers who oh, yeah. will who will write massive diatribes Screens. for yeah, on on their status updates, and I'm just That's like, beautiful. oh my, I I I can't. Even, I just see it, and I I have no interest in reading it because yeah. it's all about how their lives are terrible. So they may they may well be. I mean, it sounds like their lives are terrible. <laughs> yeah, but you know, at some point, you know, it's like like you were saying. At some point, maybe you should stop composing Facebook. Messages and deal with the issue at hand. Right, agreed. <laughs> so yeah, I just I wondered like, because I my my relationship with Facebook is definitely has evolved over time, um, and um, and I like to I mean I say it sort of jokingly, but um, you know we've got social media groups now at work, um, you know as an ad agency there's a whole the department of people that's all about the social media. Yep. Um, right, and implementing this and that and tracking Facebook and um, Twitter and um, I, I like, I see it as just so much noise. And, oh, my joke is, 
yeah, this whole internet thing is just kind of a fad. I think it's going to go away. <laughs> but you know it will. But it'll it's, definitely evolve. Yeah, it'll look it'll look different. It'll oh, definitely yeah. change. I'm I'm really curious to see what's. I'm excited to see what's next because I think it's a a powerful tool. But I think it's just like look if if most of the people are doing it, it's probably not that interesting. It will definitely evolve. I mean, Facebook is no longer what it was. What? four or five years ago when it was on fire, already people are adapting and realizing how to use it and how it manifests in their lives. Yeah. I, For me, the best thing, one of the best things um, about Facebook is connecting with people like really quick. Like, you know, you know basically what's going on in people's lives. You, you kind of have the cliff notes and when you run into somebody in the grocery store parking lot, it's not a catching up marathon. Right. right. Hey, how'd that thing go that I saw you were doing? Exactly. And and you can and all you have to do is it's a it's a real quick thing and you smile and say, Hey, this it was great catching up. Right. And it's but it's it doesn't feel as heavy. It's like like how you when you would write a letter on paper, you couldn't say, Hey, yo, how's it going? Right. You would have to write you'd have to fill two pages. You know, right. front and back to make it worth it. Well, now it doesn't have to be like that. It can be quick and fun. So here's sort of a what do you do then question. Um, what do you teach your kids? Like, do you make them write letters? No. Mm -mm. No. No. Is there, no. Is there any value to that kind of correspondence or communication? I would say there is. Three, what do you do you get do your kids write letters at all? Um I I don't I actually am am a middle ground on this. I mean, for example, I want them to code soon. Uh, I think that instead of the, for them to for them to progress in the world that we live in now, I want them to take command of the language that's being used. I want them to learn Java C uh, as early as they can. This is a malleable time in their brains to be able to do that early. They're doing robotics now, and they're doing GUI coding with with Mindstorms, with Lego Mindstorms now. Cool. And they're fascinated by it already. Mm -hmm. And go the next step. So that's the digital aspect of it. But on the flip side, they're still going to be taking biology, chemistry, history, where they're going to have to write their notes down. Yeah. Uh, you know, dude, dude, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have a poet. You're you're still gonna have a poet. One of them is gonna reject the code. Oh yeah. He's gonna he's gonna be like, uh, you know, Lord Byron posters on his wall. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna have gonna have Stanley Taylor Coleridge, you know, <laughs> on the back, you know. Yeah. I, I it's great, I, but I need them. I need them to be aware of the environment that they're in and be in command of it. Um, I always told my wife that I'd like them to learn music, be be conversant in music, be conversant in big M money, the the tool using the tool correctly. And now I've added coding as part of that thing because these will be the things that they'll need to do to engage themselves in the world. They'll need these tool sets mm -hmm. and be able to, to, to be conversant in them or to, to manipulate them to their liking so that they can do what they want. If they want to write poetry in, in LCD screens, God bless. Go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. um, I still write things down and I show them when I'm writing it down. And when we go to a restaurant with a big piece of paper around the table, I whip out pens and we're already doodling and writing and you know we were at a Thai restaurant for something two days ago and that's what we did. Um, it's not that they lose that craft, but I think that they have to they have to augment it with something else. You know, uh, I think they will write letters. They'll write letters to me. Uh, they'll write emails as well. <laughs> but ultimately, they're going to write down long-term ideas and projects in books and papers. Because those don't disappear with a hard drive. 
Hmm. Yeah. Because uh, they see me do it, and of course, uh, I find that uh, that more often than not, at the age that our children are in, if they're watching their parents doing something, they'll at least remember that that's what those guys did, and that might be worth something to them. You know, I can only do by showing, and I don't know how to code, so at least I can write. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, I think. You know, I, I ask because I think there's a <clears throat> Cameron when you say like, oh, there, you know, there's a hey, how you doing? But then there's this longer form narrative, right? And there's some you have to do some reflection about um, what you're doing or what you've been doing and how it get you got from A to B and uh -huh. um, sort of telling a story creates a context uh -huh. for um, for whatever it is you're. Writing about or talking about, and I, it's, it seems like an important thing that um, kids in the like digital age of like fast, 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 and Twitter and mm -hmm. Instagram. I mean, to to Instagram something, right? Is you're saying a picture is worth a thousand words, and so it's just pictures. But like, but after a thousand pictures, you're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have that many words. <laughs> and, and honestly, I mean, a, a good picture is gonna. I mean, any picture can produce more questions than. Then it answers, right? Because like yeah. how, what, why isn't present. I mean, um, I mean, I think it's fundamental. And so, I don't know. It's something we we think about, um, and we've worked with the older one, the young, the little one's too young yet, but she pretends even to write letters. Um, and uh, it's just it's interesting. I mean, I don't, because I think we all agree that there are some issues with. This sort of modern way of doing things, right? Of Facebook uh -huh. and the, the way we communicate. And I mean, the um, this this medium that we're in right now is a perfect example of of the longer form conversation that um, that Facebook totally lacks. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it's right. and it's more immediate, and it's more. Um, you know, personal, and it and it and is more um, back and forth, more dynamic. You know, it's not just based on who happens to see it. So, right. <laughs> well, on that note, I say I think I think we can wrap up. Tommaso, this was fantastic. It was, it was great fun. seeing you. It really was. I, I, it was great catching up, knowing what you've been up to, and yeah, it was fun. And, so, so you're yeah. still on, right, man. Yeah, Cameron, you're still up in Evanston, right? No, no, no. I'm I'm in Chicago, and uh, I work. Uh, I'm a I'm a PowerPoint presentation designer for uh, for uh, co corporate America, essentially. Yeah. I have my own company, um, and you know I tend to. It's a design company. I tend to focus more on on uh, financials, right? So, like for board presentations and stuff like that. But you know, we'll get into the marketing marketing stuck stuff if uh, people let us. So, um, so that that's where I'm at at this point. Cool. So, all right, boys. Well, thank no. you. Yeah, no. thank you. It was fun. <laughs> See you on the interwebs. I will look for you. <laughs> I know. I'll be.